All right, so I'm gonna walk through a quick tutorial of what I've found to be a good way to set exponential curves to a figure. So when we look at this figure, we're looking at change in seedling damage on the y-axis and on the x-axis, this is chilling degree hours. So zero to just about 800 chilling degree hours. When we fit in a uh, linear fit, the R squared is pretty low. The P is uh, significant, but the R squared is only 0.38. And this isn't a very good fit. What we can see here is this might be an exponential fit. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try and fit an exponential curve to this data. So here is the data. So I'm looking at uh, the second repetition, replication of one of my experiments. These are the values that I found. Here's the standard error, and that's what's fit here. So these are the values, the standard error, and then the y-axis um, values as well. Now, what I wanna do is go from a linear equation to an exponential one. So if we write, rewrite the linear equation as an exponential equation, maybe y equals mx plus b, m being the slope, b being a uh, general um, offset, uh, and then <clears throat> x being the chilling degree hours here, we rewrite the equation. We want to look at the general slope times an exponential increase by chilling degree hours. So we need a variable c, and then we need a variable b. We also need to find m for the exponential equation. So if I just rewrite this as y equals a plus b, a being this offset, b being the slope, and c being the exponential change per degree hour. Here's that equation again. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in these values as we find them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fit the equation for every 10 chilling degree hours. This is gonna create a really smooth curve, whereas in Excel, if you don't have them uh, this close, the curve is gonna be more rigid and it's not gonna be uh, very nice looking. It'll be more like straight lines between different points, uh, which is not what we want. So I'm going to fit the equation separately. So I'm going to pull up jump here. And here's that data for the experimental units. Again, this is the same as what I showed in the Excel sheet. Here's all my chilling degree hour fits. And then here is where the equation is going to generate values. So right now, I've labeled this column. So this is the exponential fit. And then I'm going to have a formula here. Now, what you need to do is add a new parameter. When you add a new parameter, it's going to ask for a name. I just did A, B, and C, like I did before. And I'm not going to put in a value. I've already done this for A, B, and C. So I'm going to equal to zero at the start. Okay. I'm going to analyze specialized modeling nonlinear. Now, I'm doing this by rep and it's predicting values for both replications, but I only want the second rep. So I'm gonna put rep on the y. Instead of chilling degree hours in my x, chilling degree hours is already factored in here. So if we look at the formula again, c times degree hour 15, right? I'm gonna put that in the x predictor. Put rep again here, and the mean here. Okay. So what it does is going to generate two fits. I don't want the first rep fit. I only want the second rep fit. So it's going to have estimates for the three values. I'm going to hit go. The first thing it's going to generate is just a flat line. And it's going to generate an estimate. Now this is more like a mean line, which is not what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this back to maybe somewhere I think is where the asymptote is going to be. And the asymptote is basically like where it's going to correlate with um, another value. So if you're doing a full exponential, you can go from zero. However, my base value um, is not zero. It's somewhere like five, uh, even with no chilling degree hours. Um, so I'm just going to keep it right around here. I'm going to lock in that value up here. I'm going to hit go again, and it's going to converge and give me another fit. 
Now these fits can be altered, but they just kind of go back to that zero uh, exponential increase. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save the estimates. And now it's gonna generate estimates for all of these values. Okay. So what I wanna do is I wanna do this whole thing again, because now it's going to start predicting based on the values that I've saved. This one. Now it's gonna save this value, it's gonna save the value here. I'm gonna hit go again. It's doing the same thing. So what we want to do is lock in the value. Maybe lower it. I'm gonna go again. Now this should give us a little bit more give. It's not doing that right now. So let's try. So jump is weird. It makes you do this fit sometimes a few times uh, to really start generating the value you want. I'm gonna go ahead and save that estimate a second time. Now it's giving me different values, right? Let's try it one more time. Let's see if that gives us a better idea. Okay, let's go again. So now it's going to give me a better prediction, right? So we're pretty close here, it looks like. Now we can play with these a little bit if we want to change them. So this is going to basically change when the exponential starts when you do C. This B is also going to kind of change that value. And I know that it's, I, I want it around here. Let's try it again. So now we're getting a pretty good fit. So let's save the estimates again. I think I'm pretty confident in this fit. Standard error is not very high for these values. That's good. Just for uh, for the sake of making sure that this is exactly the fit I want, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here again. Okay, this again. There we go. Now it's not changing much. I think that this is definitely the fit I want to keep. Okay, so now we have the values that we should get. And now it's gonna tell me what these values should be here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter this into Excel. So the first value, 6.6. .6. Don't need this many um, values here, for sure. Um, you can round them uh, because there is gonna be some rounding error likely, uh, but I just wanna generate the best possible fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in as many numbers as they provide. I did over here is I've created the equation again. So now it's going to reference A. I've locked in that value by hitting F4 when I click on it. And then this is going to be B. If I hit F4 again, it'll change. Um, the dollar sign means that that cell or column, that row or column number is locked in. Now it's not. So if I like drag down this, it's going to change um, and it's going to start referencing. The next cell down. But I want it locked. So I'm going to save that. C, I also want to lock in. So I'm just going to add it once. I don't want to lock in this. So this is going to be our showing degree hours <clears throat> all the way down. I'm going in increments of 10. 
just to make the curve very smooth. Do that, and it'll drag down. Now there's some problem here because this is not giving me any difference in the values that they crossed. Let's see what we did here. Basically the same thing. You can see here, it starts becoming exponential towards the end. And that should be what I see here. Go ahead and just drag it down and see if I change the value here. There, there we go. So now it has, so it's changed all the values all the way down. We're ending up with an exponential value. That far we go along. Now I want to change this. I want to select the data. I made an exponential fit column or uh, entry. I'm going to make sure that this is dragged through all of the x values. I'm going to make sure that this is dragged through all of the y values. Okay. Now we have a much better exponential fit. Now, if I want to keep it, Going past this point, I have up to 770 chilling degree hours. Let me just add another one to it. And then I can select the data again and make sure that this is covering all of those values. The other thing here is that you need a p value and r squared for this. Uh, I'm still figuring out how to exactly generate those, but this is basically if you're doing any curve fitting, you're going to have to uh, create your own entry to insert a uh, trend line. So, you know, this value here, um, if we go down to the exponential fit series, uh, I've eliminated the markers, so there's no markers. And then to make this a uh, line like this, even though this is just a you know point plot, I'm changing the series chart type. So this first set, uh, set is just a scatter, but the second set I've changed to a scatter with a smooth um, line approach. Anyway, this is basically how you're gonna generate any kind of curve. You can do this with a logarithmic curve, uh, and any other kind um, that you want to do, but you just have to basically insert all the equation and values yourself, and then just do a little bit of troubleshooting to make sure that this line appears as you want it to. Um, in JMP as well, it's uh, obviously a little bit uh, esoteric to try and figure out exactly what they're what they're looking for you to do to get the predictor to go the right way, uh, and that's one of the limitations of jump is that sometimes it can be a little bit confusing uh, as far as how to generate that kind of curve. Um, but really, once you familiarize yourself a little bit, um, you just kind of keep running the same thing a few times to make sure that it uh, is coming out the way you want it to. So anyway, that's all I have. So uh, thanks.